What was really interesting about the Sunday Times coverage yesterday was it means that Murdoch has kind of cut Lebedev loose. Murdoch's calculations are legendary, of course, because he still owns Fox News, and Fox News has presenters on it that are essentially um, uh, 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 firing distraction for Vladimir Putin. There's a couple of presenters on Fox News who might as well be on the Kremlin payroll, such as their analysis, for want of a better word, of the situation in Ukraine. So you, you, you have this incredible sense, and it's happened under our noses now for so long that we don't really notice it. You kind of put a few quid on every horse. Do you remember those machines in the fair when we were kids? They're probably still there. I haven't seen them for a while. But you, there'd be horses, horse races, like a mechanical horse race. And when you're a kid, you're convinced, or I was, I was a strange kid, you're convinced that there must be, that you can hack it or crack it, that there's a code that you can crack. And you put a tuppenny piece, you put tuppence on a slot. There's six slots with different odds, right? And you put tuppence on a slot, and obviously if your horse comes in, it pays out. And the longer the odds, the bigger the payout. You know how betting works. But I always had this idea that there must be a way to put 2p on every slot and make a profit. Obviously, you can't, but I always think of that when I look at media ownership, particularly Rupert Murdoch, because he'll have the Times writing relatively, well, it's sometimes incredibly brilliant journalism. It employs some of the finest journalists in this country. And then there'll also be people writing under his stable, most obviously for The Sun, who are completely toxic and, and, and profoundly deceitful. If Imagine owning several newspapers and having some of them come out in favour of Brexit and some of them come out against it. We talk a lot on the programme about politicians shouting heads and tails as they toss a coin into the air and then doing a lap of honour however it lands. I don't think he does that. I think he has a pretty clear idea about what he wants. But he can avoid being blatant about it because if he's got his populist newspaper to come out in favour of something, he can protect his so-called respectability or credibility by getting his intellectual newspaper to come out against something. And it almost adds to the problem because all those bloody experts on the Times saying that Brexit's going to be a bad idea get drowned out by all the um, yobbos on the sun. This is the kind of reading of the situation. It's not what I... Well, it is what I believe about the columnists. It's not what I believe about the readers. You get them to drown out the clever lads and lasses on the Times by shouting the odds in the pages of the Sun. So I, I don't know whether decisions like this reach all the way up to the top of the um, empire, but it seems unlikely to me that the Sunday Times would pull Evgeny Lebedev's past to pieces in yesterday's pages without the permission of the boss, the proprietor, Rupert Murdoch. So that photograph with Rupert Murdoch, Evgeny Lebedev and Nigel Farage all sort of guffawing at a, at a summer party thrown by the Russian oligarch, it seems to me to be a picture for the ages. It might be a picture that appears in books. It might be a picture that appears in, in history books because it was also reported in the Sunday Times yesterday that Evgeny Lebedev was either at or, or hosted, I can't remember which, a dinner party at which he sought to persuade Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, both attending with their then wives, both marriages for, for, for what it's worth now over, both attending with their then wives. He sought to persuade Boris Johnson and, and Michael Gove to, to publicly come out in favour of Brexit. Quite what qualified him to make that sort of intervention at one of the highest levels of British politics, I don't know, apart from money and access. But I found that remarkable. And remember, this appeared in Rupert Murdoch's Sunday Times, which I'm not suggesting makes it true, but it certainly makes it credible, given the background of all the characters and the links previously between them. It also, I think, makes a pretty powerful case for suggesting that Murdoch has decided to cut Lebedev loose in the same way that the British government has decided to cut Roman Abramovich loose, um, despite the fact that, that perhaps more prominent uh, oligarchs, or certainly oligarchs whose links with the Conservative Party are clearer, uh, remain unsanctioned. And don't forget the co-chairman of the Conservative Party, a chap called Ben Elliott, who's the nephew of Camilla Parker Bowles, um, still on the Russian version of his company's concierge company's website boasts about all the favors they can do for super rich Russians. They've removed the English language version, but hey-ho, business is business.